Today we're gonna to be making these winter landscapes. In order to create this project, you're gonna need some watercolor paper. I'm using the Hansen brand watercolor paper in size nine by 12. However, I've cut the sheets in two, so this sheet is nine inches by six inches. You're also gonna need a half inch flat brush or something similar and three different colors of liquid watercolor. I'm using Color Splash brand in purple, blue, and turquoise. Since the colors look similar when they're on a paper plate, I've made sure to label them so I know which color I'm using. The, uh, for later on, you're gonna need some washable tempura paint in white, as well as a smaller paintbrush and a Sharpie marker. The first step for painting the background is to create our horizon line. You can make your horizon line as flat or as hilly as you want. I'm gonna go in with purple first in order to do that. Once I've done that, I'm gonna keep adding a little bit more purple. And I'm gonna be working pretty quickly since I want our colors to blend together and liquid watercolors do dry fairly fast. I'm noticing any areas that might have a lot of paint kind of pooling in one spot, and I'm just using my brush to kind of push that paint into other areas that need it. When I'm ready to switch to my next color, I'm going to switch to blue. I'm not washing my brush in between since I do want these colors to blend together, so I'm not worried about washing all of the previous color off of the brush first. And my layers don't have to be perfect. I'm just trying to get some color on the page. In general, my brush strokes are kind of mimicking that of the horizon. And again, making sure to any areas that have a lot of paint, I'm pushing that paint into other areas that need some. Lastly, I'm gonna go in with my turquoise. Again, working quickly just to get as much blended together as possible before it dries. And I've made sure to kind of cover the whole page. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna kind of blend these layers even more, and I'm gonna do that by combining colors. So first I'm gonna combine a little bit of the turquoise with a little bit of the blue. And I'm gonna go in and kind of paint an in-between layer here with that turquoise uh, and that blue. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna combine a little bit of the blue with a little bit of the purple. And I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna create an in-between layer between the blue and the purple as well. By now, your original layers will probably be mostly dry. So I'm also going to kind of go back and go over some of those layers too. And since I want these to not be mixed, I'm gonna wash my brush and then I'm gonna go over with just plain purple over my purple layer once more. If I don't go over everything completely, that's okay. Just kind of doing my best to blend those layers. And then I'm gonna go in with my plain blue again and just kind of get those layers as blended as I can. Again, if there's a lot of paint in one spot, I'm blending it out. And then lastly, I'm gonna go in, wash my brush and then go in again with my plain turquoise. And making sure that I've done my best to kind of blend the layer between the blue and the turquoise. Here it looks like I've gotten some water and it's creating this spot. So I'm going to go over that with a mostly dry brush and just try to kind of blend that spot down a little bit. That can happen if you get too much water or too much paint in one spot. So that's why you kind of want to spread the paint evenly as possible. Okay, that is looking pretty good to me. 
So I'm gonna just go ahead and set this aside and wait for it to dry before moving on to the next step. For this next step, I just have a little bit of the white tempura paint over here, and I'm going to use it to create some dots of snow on my landscape now that it's dried. And I'm gonna rest the palm of my hand here, my wrist, um, on the paper as I'm doing this. I'm gonna make sure I've got a lot of paint on my brush. And then I'm just going to kind of dot it on wherever I would like snow. And I'm pretty happy with this, so I'm gonna let this set aside and let this dry, and then I'll be able to go in with my Sharpie marker and start my trees. When deciding how to model your trees for your landscape, I find it helpful to simply Google something like pine tree silhouette and choose something simple to copy like this. And so that's what I'm going to be aiming to copy today. I'm going to do a pretty simple version of it. Um, you can choose to do your trees however you want. I've, I'm going to choose to do three trees, starting with one in this corner. And I'm gonna make my first one pretty big, but you can make yours as large or as small as you want. I'm gonna start with a fairly straight line, and I'm going to make the trunk just slightly bigger um, at the base. You can always go back and end up making the trunk thicker if you need to, but obviously you can't make it thinner, so it's better to start off um, with a pretty thin trunk of your tree. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to add um, some of my kind of pine leaf details and what I tend to do is do maybe two or three kind of almost fingers that are jutting out from the tree. So one, two, and then maybe another one, three up here. Okay. And I'm doing kind of just a random pattern to try to mimic the randomness of a real tree. And so I'm using some slightly different designs here but for the most part they're all just kind of hanging down and you've got some kind of parts that are thinner some parts that are thicker sometimes that might go out a lot sometimes it might not go out a lot And then I'm done with this tree, but I can go back now that I've gone over it once and I can add some more details. So I can add a little bit more detail to the leaves that I've already outlined. And lastly, what I'm going to do to make sure that my silhouette is nice and dark is I'm gonna go back over it one more time with my Sharpie and just kind of color in everything that I've colored before. I don't need to get super close to the edge and redo all the edges, but sometimes what I like to do is just kind of lightly outline the leaf and color it in again. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna make that black color saturated even more so that that silhouette is really going to stand out. Perfect. 
And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to do a few more trees. And if you have any kind of paint on your base, you can position your trees so that your tree's leaves kind of cover up any smudges of paint that you might have gotten down here. And that is all.